Hi guys, it is April 14, 2018. I'm starting this video with the dynamic duo, Diamond and Silk, who I like, but do not respect their position. And I was thinking yesterday, wow, it would be so fabulous to have Diamond and Silk completely out of the matrix, not supporting Trump, but completely out of the matrix. They are funny, they reach a lot of people, and wouldn't it be amazing to listen to them talk about, hey, we don't have two parties. We have one party. And we are now no longer a country like we used to have. Our government is a corporation. Oh, my God. And Trump is the CEO. The board members are behind the curtain. They pull the strings of the CEO, Trump who, really? He's going to make America great again? That's what I would like to see. I would like to see everybody out of the matrix completely. I'm still getting an awful lot of comments from quote-unquote awake people who are supporting Trump. And, well, if I get any evidence of their uh, why they support Trump, it's it's the crumbs that they have been thrown, that they, they then throw upon other people. The crumbs that the narcissist loves to give their scapegoat or their targeted person, their targeted individual. They throw out crumbs to keep them in the game. And that's exactly what Trump has done. I, I am really now understanding that when people don't want to do anything to help fix the problems and rely on somebody else to fix it, they will then support that person. But they can't do any in-depth research on that person because, well, their delusion will be shattered. And they might have to do something themselves. We are living a time of such deception that it really is, it takes enormous amounts of energy, time, to try to get to the truth. Discernment? My God! Uh, that is, it's been raised to a whole new level. And it, unfortunately, is rather exhausting today to try to get to the truth. One thing I have learned, you do not trust a liar. When somebody lies and lies and lies, you know that you're going to be lied to again if they can't accept any responsibility for those lies and then begin to tell the truth, you know that this is not a person that you can trust. No matter what they do. And when people lie, they have an agenda. And it's for themselves, not for you. So, has Trump lied? Yes. Then people will say, yes, but he has to. He's fighting the deep state. And he's such a, a, a brilliant chess player. Do you understand that you are the pawn in that game? It, I don't know. Yes, unsafe for the community. That's, that, <laughs> oh my God. That means the community is filled with really, really fragile people who can only hear, oh, what they want to hear. And anything else is just going to break them. Get rid of this dynamic duo. It is so sad what we have become here in our country. So, Diamond and Silk. You're supporting a liar. You're supporting someone who is so twisted and deranged. Oh, cars. Hang on. Okay.
Yes, Diamond and Silk, you're supporting someone who is really just an, a megalomaniac, narcissist, so incredibly self-centered, and not a good person. Not a good person, really. So, please, please, come on. Be for the truth, Diamond and Silk, not the personality, Trump. You go on the truth, you can't go wrong. You let truth be your guide, you can't go wrong. TPP. Now, I posted a lot of videos for those Trump supporters, hoping that they would begin to reevaluate uh, their support of this guy, Trump. Uh, it seems that we still have, quote unquote, a week awake people who are supporting him. Um, you can't support a personality. And when you do that, you then hand over your individual power to that person and then watch what they do with it. They destroy you. I have posted videos because so many people were saying, Carol, Trump, is fighting the deep state. He got us out of the Paris Agreement. He got us out of TPP. Social media, guys. Social media has made it incredibly effective for those organizations and companies, those people who gather all of the information on all of us, our opinions, our views, what we're outraged about. Don't you think that Trump had people working for him even before he declared his candidacy to get that, you know, uh, put your finger on the pulse of American culture, find out where Americans stand on these issues. And then you find out on social media, a whole lot of Americans are really upset about this Paris climate change accord and the TPP, Trump. Okay. All right. Now I know what to do. I am going to say that I'll pull us out of the Paris Accord and I'll come out hard against the TPP and claim that it's a rape of our country, our sovereignty. Okay, it doesn't matter what Trump says. We do not have a working government like we used to. Even then, it wasn't working all that well. But we still kind of had three branches, you know, decades, decades ago. Um, we don't anymore. But, uh, look, Trump just proved it again. He doesn't have to go to Congress for approval, and nobody says a word. We're bombing the country. We don't need evidence. We don't need the investigation started today. That organization, oh, chemical weapons, organization something chemical weapons. I can't remember the name. They started their investigation today. We bombed yesterday. But did he go to Congress for approval? No. But we saw during the Obama years, our Secretary of Defense in a hearing, congressional hearings, that are so a staged play for Americans to believe that Congress is doing something. The hearing. Uh, who was it? Was it Panetta? I can't remember. But he said, we, we don't have to go to Congress for approval. We went to the United Nations. Oh, really? Well, I guess that means we don't have a constitution. Get it? Trump, make America great again? That would be to bring back that constitution and enforce it. Has he? No. He's lied to all of us. So comes out. Oh, I'm against the Paris uh, Climate Accord, Climate Change Accord, and I'm pulling us out. Yay, I'll vote for you. TPP, it's a rape of our country. Yay, I'll vote for you. He didn't pull us out of any Paris Agreement. Yeah, all right, the president signs on to international treaties. Then the next step is Congress ratifies that treaty. That treaty cannot be enforced until Congress ratifies it. We don't have 
that government anymore. What we now have is mayors across the country and governors across the country have signed on to an international treaty and they are implementing the rules and the regulations of the Paris Climate Change Accord and that's not what's supposed to be happening, okay? Did Trump ever come out and voice opposition to those who are implementing this treaty? Did he ever say, hey guys, you're not supposed to do that. And if you do it, then you are violating the Constitution. No, he didn't. So it doesn't matter what Trump said. And does he know that that Paris Agreement, the Climate Change Accord, is being implemented by those mayors? Yes. It's all a deception. The TPP, now Trump, has waffled. Well, yeah, I'm open to rejoining the TPP. He dropped that bombshell during a meeting of officials from America's agricultural heartland. Before that, he dropped another bombshell at the um, World Economic Forum in Davos. He hinted that he would be interested in coming back if the United States could get a much better deal. What will that deal be? Don't you realize that they clearly got an awful lot of information from Americans outraged because it was all over social media how the TPP would destroy our national sovereignty and allow corporations to, in any country that was a signatory to the TPP, allow corporations to usurp those nations' laws and regulations. It would give complete control to corporations. Okay, you get all of that information, you campaign on get rid of the TPP, and then, oh, a year and a half later, you, uh, I'm open to rejoining it. You have to get the um, this guy. All right. Clearly, he's a narcissist. Clearly, he's self-centered, and clearly, he's all he's been. His entire life has demonstrated I'm all about me and building my financial empire. Empire. You you have people who write he's a good Christian. Oh my God, what a warped uh, idea of Christianity and being a good Christian you have in your head. Has he ever helped any poor people? He's built his own financial empire for his own self, for his own power, and his own control. In his book, The Art of the Deal, right here, nine quotes. Yay, Trump, the art of the deal. What does he say? The final key to the way I promote is bravado. I play to people's fantasies. I call it truthful hyperbole, an oxymoron, if there ever was one. And he states it's an innocent form of exaggeration and a very effective form of promotion. So, Americans live a pretense. They talk good values, but they live one value, money, and getting more of it. So when you have somebody like Trump, and you have people who value money, they look up to this guy, they buy his book, and then they go out, and they try to emulate Trump. Oh, not Christ, Trump. This is called manipulating people with lies. It is not innocent. It harms people who believe them. It breaks trust. The ripple effect in our society, when you have a lot of people doing this, is very destructive. I mean, remember, greed is good. Greed is good. We have made the immoral moral. Because now our country is so filled with so many people who 
regard themselves as good people and they demonstrate, not a good person, they demonstrate self-centeredness, greed, and their own uh, narcissism. They may not be pathologically narcissists, but narcissistic tendencies are within millions and millions of Americans because they look up to people. They don't, they don't care about what the person does to get all their money. They just see the money and they want it. So, do you think this guy used truthful hyperbole upon you to sell himself the bravado to sell himself? Yes, he did. But look at who he surrounds himself with. People who think he's fighting the deep state. He is deep state. He's a lover of Israel. He will bow down to whatever Netanyahu wants. Do you think Israel is not deep state? And he's appointed deep state members, Council on Foreign Relations, Goldman Sachs, uh, his economic, his top economic advisors, Larry Kudlow, and globalist U.S. trade representative Robert Lightsayer, Lightsayer, I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but Robert, he's a member of the deep state swamp known as the Council on Foreign Relations. Trump has asked both them, Larry and Robert, to look into rejoining the TPP. Now, he... Look at Treasury Secretary Stephen Munchen, who is Skull and Bones, Goldman Sachs, John Bolton, my God, and people still support this guy. National Security Advisor John Bolton, another member of the globalist CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, a tried and true neocon who... I believe you can't quote me on this, but has promoted, agreed with that um, project for new American century. You know, that neocon plan to create multiple wars. Wow. What are we living? So, look. Um, we're living a time that it, it, the lies, you know, they, they accumulate and they create such chaos and mess that it's very hard to work yourself out of it. Um, when I read things like this, okay, Trump had said that or described the TPP as the rape of our country. So, when you read this, we are talking about sovereignty and independence as well as abrogating the Constitution by taking the regulation of commerce with foreign nations out of the hands of Congress. Congress is made up, is made up of the representatives of the states and American people. Really? This means that the American people will lose control over their economy? We can always recover from a lack of jobs and a poor economy, but we cannot recover from the loss of independence. This is a major step toward regionalization on the road to a one world government controlled by the United Nations. Okay, well, um, the United Nations already has control over our country. We hardly have any sovereignty left. The Constitution has not been enforced in oh so long. We don't have a constitution, and those representatives in Congress, they represent corporations, and this has been going on for decades. Americans live a complete and utter delusion. They're in fantasy land. They are in fantasy land. Trump, in the art of deal, said, I play to people's fantasies. We don't have any control. 
of our, our economy because our economy is completely controlled by Wall Street, Federal Reserve, and the Council on Foreign Relations. And look at this excellent news that Trump administration may join TPP, wrote Richard Haas, who I believe is one of the drafters of the Project for a New American Century. Can't quote me on that. I believe he is, but I could be wrong. Memory failing me. Richard Haas is the president of the Council on Foreign Relations. David Rockefeller, who Trump is uh, good friends with, longtime Council on Foreign Relations leader, David Rockefeller. And he, in a book, has come out and stated he's boasted in his memoirs about conspiring against America's interests with a secret cabal of internationalists to build a one world political and economic system. Had nothing but praise for a murderous regime, Chairman Mao. The globalists have an awful lot of praise for a guy that killed 60 to 80 million people. These are sick people. And unfortunately, an awful lot of ordinary people put them on pedestals because they think that they're successful. He's surrounded by globalists. Trump. And here, Americans who value independence and self-government under the U.S. Constitution must get to work immediately educating their representatives and their communities. Well, when you have to educate your representatives, something's very wrong. But it's not about educating your representatives. What one needs to do is figure out how to raise their consciousness and stop operating, living life on that low level of consciousness that is so ego-driven that what that individual does, it's all about them, self-centered, hey, I'm a representative and I can grow my wealth getting money from corporations. Our Congress, those representatives, have not represented the American people for decades. They represent corporations. And not until the individual does that work necessary where they have resolved all of their behaviors that are clearly greedy, selfish, self-centered, all of the lying and corruption that they engage in, we will get nowhere. Americans must remain constantly active and vigilant. Well, unfortunately, Americans are right there with all of the corruption and the lying. You know, you listen to this guy. One year ago, Assad launched a savage chemical weapons attack against his own innocent people. The United States responded with 58 missile strikes that destroyed 20% of the Syrian Air Force. Last Saturday, the Assad regime again deployed chemical weapons to slaughter innocent civilians, this time in the town of Douma near the Syrian capital of Damascus. This massacre was a significant escalation in a pattern of chemical weapons use by that very terrible regime. The evil and the despicable attack left mothers and fathers, infants and children thrashing in pain and gasping for air. 
These are not the actions of a man. They are crimes of a monster instead. Following the horrors of World War I a century ago, civilized nations joined together to ban chemical warfare. Chemical weapons are uniquely dangerous, not only because they inflict gruesome suffering, but because even small amounts can unleash widespread devastation. The purpose of our actions tonight is to establish a strong deterrent against the production, spread, and use of chemical weapons. Establishing this deterrent is a vital national security interest of the United States. The combined American, British, and French response to these atrocities will integrate all instruments of our national power, military, economic, and diplomatic. We are prepared to sustain this response until the Syrian regime stops its use of prohibited chemical agents. I also have a message tonight for the two governments most responsible for supporting, equipping, and financing the criminal Assad regime. To Iran and to Russia, I ask, what kind of a nation wants to be associated with the mass murder of innocent men, women, and children? The nations of the world can be judged by the friends they keep. Okay, so the first attack, he didn't wait for any investigation or evidence. And with all of these attacks, when our presidents, Obama, Trump, coming out, the same narrative, Assad using chemical weapons against his own civilians, that the evidence points to the rebels trained by the CIA. Posted too many videos, and if you don't know that now, then I suggest that you do some research. This attack, the investigation starts today, and he is up there. His own administration, his own spokeswoman, came out and said that they don't have the evidence to declare that it was Assad. He doesn't wait. He comes out and lies. He claims that it was Assad and bombs Syria. The chemical weapons that we have used in every war, my God, Americans, baby boomers, Agent Orange, that the Vietnamese are still suffering the consequences of that Agent Orange, the white phosphorus that I believe was dropped on Syria by this guy, this guy killing innocent people with his drones, children, the chemical weapons that were used in Iraq, the chemical weapons that were used against our own soldiers. It is sickening to see how many adults will just believe liars. I'm tired of living this lie in our country that we are the morally superior country when we are in fact the evil empire. Lying stealing, colonizing, destroying country after country. And it's for the wealth of people like Trump, the globalists, friends. You can judge. You can judge a person or a nation by the friends they keep. Saudi Arabia. All right. I will link below. I will link below. It, 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 we, I'm sorry. It is morally reprehensible to continue to support these people. You can judge Trump by the friends he keeps. We roll out the carpet to the prince of Saudi Arabia. 
Saudi Arabia, I'm not going to go through all of their brutality, how extremist they are, what they do to people in Saudi Arabia. If you have any interest, if you don't know, then I suggest you click on the link and read some of what Saudi Arabia does. It is truly this royal Saud family are so unbelievably cruel, murderous, so filled with evil. But these are the friends that we keep. And the United Nations appoints <laughs> Saudi Arabia as the chair of their Human Rights Council. Is something wrong with the United Nations? Absolutely. And how about how about that fabulous uh, Israel? Our best friend, Israel. I will link below to this, although they stopped updating the crimes. The human rights violations, the war crimes committed by Israel. In 2013, it's 2018. Oh God, you can't say anything about Israel. You're anti-Semitic. I am so sick of this. I have nothing against Jews. I have nothing against Christians. Yeah, but you say anything about those who are so hypocritical, then you hate Christians and you're anti-Semitic. No, I hate hypocrisy. I hate lying. I hate, hate evil. And I hate those who, you know, not people, but their demonstration of support of these people. So you can read this, yeah. Their embargo, Israel's full control over Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. They're imprisoned in this little, little, little tiny area. And then Israel drops bombs on them, killing children. But they actually had officials in Israel, in the Israeli government, that would, <laughs> Jesus, calculate how many calories Palestinians could eat that could keep them right on the edge of malnutrition. Oh, but then they decided that they would actually give them less. And a whole lot of Palestinians are malnourished. Why do you do this to your people? It keeps them weak. Look, you know, nothing is going to change until until Americans get face the truth that we are the evil empire. Until Brits face the truth, or Scots face the truth, that the United Kingdom is the evil empire and Israel. You want to live your delusions? Go right ahead. But that puts you on the side of evil. Not good. And the new access of evil, the USA, the UK, Israel, it's not a new access. It has been the access of evil for an awfully long time. So, yeah, go ahead and you can support China all you want. But China, I was just, I put up the um, cursor and the name of this article came up. You can support Trump all you want. Go ahead. And don't do any in-depth analysis or in-depth research on who he has appointed, on what he really is doing. Now, hold on to your delusion because it will allow you to live your life doing nothing, believing that Trump is going to fix everything. Great. That'll get us nowhere. 
until you reevaluate those beliefs that you hold. You will still be supporting evil. And that's exactly what is going on. You know, it is not, there is no two party system here. And there is no one who's going to make America great again. No one individual, certainly not our representatives in Congress. The job, unfortunately, is up to each one of us. And that entails each one of us individually to get our thinking clear and straight and we behaving in a moral way. And that entails an awful lot. That means, wow, well, considering I'm a cog in the wheel of this evil system, I contributing to that wheel turning endlessly. Yeah, it will take Americans to stop being that cog. It will take Americans to stop funding their criminal, immoral, disgustingly, grossly corrupt government. Oh, April 15th tomorrow. Right. So millions upon millions of Americans sent their check out already because oh, I can't be late because oh, we fear the IRS who steals your money. They don't want to pay the late fees. Pay it. Fund it. But know that you are funding not a good government, but a really evil one. Oh, you're not even funding a government. You're funding a corporation. Oh, roll your eyes. Go ahead. You haven't done any research to find out if what people are saying is true. So you're rolling your eyes and claiming that people are conspiracy theorists and you haven't done any research. Oh, you can't get that. That only demonstrates that you're really profoundly immature and stupid. Stupid. You've got to do the research to find out what really is taking place. When you don't do that, what does that say about you? All links at the bottom.